Oh, so they're, they're, they're already 2% Irish. Yeah. 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 I would just vote for it. Okay. We'll make sure. So, like, so, Okay, folks, I'd like to uh, uh, call the St. Charles County uh, meeting of uh, Monday, April the 10th of 2023 to, to order here. We will begin with an invocation uh, by Manny uh, Mencius of the United Pentecostal Church, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance uh, led by David Hamm. Okay. Can you stand while I pray? Lord, we love you, and Lord, we praise you. We worship you. You are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the ending. You are the first and the last and that which is to come. You are the great I Am, the everlasting Father. You are our comforter, our healer, and our provider. You are our rock, our redeemer, and our king. And Lord, we come before you today and ask for wisdom and guidance as we come before you and ask you that you set before us and set with us, Lord. Lead us, guide us, and order our footsteps. And Lord, I rebuke every force that would come against our children and our community. Lord, help St. Charles be a light and a beacon of hope to a broken and beaten down world. Lord, we ask that you bless us and bless our homes, anoint us and give us wisdom. Let St. Charles be a conduit of blessings and growth. And we ask all this in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. And everybody say amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Could you, could you please, please call the roll? Councilmember Matt Swanson. Present. Councilmember Joe Brazel. Here. Councilmember Mike Elam. Here. Councilmember Terry Hollander. Here. Councilmember Dave Hammond. Here. Councilmember Nancy Schneider. Councilmember Tim Baker. Here. Okay, we begin the night's meeting with uh, some conditional use permits, uh, beginning with bill number 5163. Bill number 5163 requested by Michael Herbert, sponsored by Tim Baker, an ordinance granting conditional use permit CUP 22-15A for a lawn care service to Hearst Investments LLC and James Hearst VLCS LLC applicant. Okay, we'll begin with uh, Mr. Meyer. Sure. Do you solemnly swear that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. i summarize briefly the two related conditional use permits that are before you. These are two different bills, but I'd like to make one presentation concerning both. Concerns the same property. Again, it's 3133 Hopewell Road. Uh, you may know this property near the curve of Hopewell Road because it used to be a county road maintenance facility in the 1990s and then in the 2000s it was it was sold to uh, in uh, private hands and since that time um, subsequent property owners have received uh, several condition use permits one for a nursery another for a boat storage yard and in fact that's happened twice but both times those condition use permits expired before they came in uh, to fruition however um, the facility has a gravel lot, um, it, it has uh, um, a stormwater facility, and it has the, the salt dome building that are still there. So it has been developed in conformance with what would have been a boat storage yard had they taken advantage of that after the 2017, um, or excuse me, the most recent conditional use permit. So two conditional use permits requested. A lawn care service, which by definition can only be cutting of grass and um, all um, vehicles, um, except for employee vehicles and equipment, have to be stored indoors. And so 
what's been related to us is that the salt storage, well, salt dome will be repurposed for indoor storage for the lawn care business. Also, I would like to note that because it's owned agricultural, this can only be for boat storage. It can't be for RVs and other uh, vehicles um, like um, trucks or, or automobiles. So uh, just a, a boat storage yard. The Planning and Zoning Commission held two separate um, public hearings on these two proposals and for each uh, following those public hearings voted eight in favor and zero against with specific conditions recommended that are in the two draft bills before you tonight. And um, if you don't have any questions, I would like to introduce um, James Hurst, if he's here tonight, and if not, any other representative who might be here for this case. Mr. Hurst. And I'll need to swear you in, sir. Yes, ma'am. Do you solemnly swear that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, ma'am. Oh. My name is James. <laughs> First, uh, I'm here asking for conditions permits for the 3133 Hopewell property, one for boat storage, one for a lawn care facility. Um, we've met all the planning and zoning requirements. We intend on moving the gate back, but I didn't want to move the gate back until I had permission from you guys with the permits or whatnot. I know it's one of those big safety concerns was being able to get a vehicle and truck and trailer completely off the road to open the access to the gate, which I agree with, but I couldn't do that until I had the conditions permits to do so. Um, outside that, do you guys have any questions for me that I can answer? I mean, everything's been pretty much outlined already. Sure. Mr. Uh, yes, sir. Well, do you have a pot plan of a drone up of how you plan on laying out the uh, <coughs> boats and storage and how many, or are we just talking, what are we talking about, just lawn care right now? No, I both. guess we're, Terry, are you just talking about the lawn care right now? Well, we can talk about both. You can talk, I mean, I'm fine with Since both. He's, well, the lawn care business. And it's, it's going to be two separate boats. You're right, gonna, right. We can talk to them. Okay, so the lawn care business, you're going to store everything inside? Yes. Okay. And what was the prior business to that? I, I, I know exactly where this is, I just don't remember. Was there anything, was it, has that been active in the last several years? Not to my knowledge, I, I don't know. I just, I just closed on it last year, so. Okay, if, and as far as the, the storage, the outside storage, what is your plan? We're putting a fence up. It's on the pot plan that we submitted to planning and zoning. Uh, we had engineering and everything else uh, done spec. It's a fence that goes down more or less the middle of the property there. It's a little bit bigger on the boat storage side than there's a lawn care side. Um, there's parking spots, they won't be, they'll be identified by just stakes in the ground, so nothing obnoxious or anything how, else. How many? Would you? I believe it's 51. 51. And what kind of screenings are you going to have for the visual, uh, the optical? Um, there's a six-foot chain link fence all around the property that the county previously installed uh, before I took ownership of it, where you got the um, fabric, the black mesh all the way wrapped all the way around it, except for on the north side, only because the homeowner there asked me not to do it until I had to, uh, which obviously I have no problem doing so, and they're okay with me doing so as well. So there's no, no berm, no evergreen trees, no foliage of any kind? On the plot drawing, there is a type 2 buffer going on the north side of the property between me and I think it's 3137 Hopewell, the neighboring property there. It's a type okay. 2 buffer from defined by St. Charles County. Okay. I just, um, <clears throat> we got a lot of complaints on the storage units part portion of it, the, um, the, the grass portion of it, um, putting... On the grass indoor, portion. I'm sorry. You said on the grass portion of it. I mean, no, the the storage portion. I'm oh, sorry. Yes, sir. Yeah. I apologize. Yeah, it was just a lot of, just you know, it's not attractive to people who live there, and, and people don't really care for it, and I don't believe really I do either. So, <clears throat> I'm just saying. Yeah. Is there any anyone else that would have any questions? Yes, Mr. Swans. This would be for staff. Do we have a photometric policy whatsoever for downward lighting? There's. Sorry. We do. Does he comply within that? When, um, at the time that a, a site plan or building permit is submitted, we will review the lighting. Um, but we have a maximum lighting standards at the property line. So only, I think it's one half of a foot candle can be off of the property, beyond the property lines. So that's our standard with the county. Has a photometric plan been submitted? Oh, photometric plan, no. So we have no plan submitted for lighting on this whatsoever, and I'm assuming, sir, um, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. James. James, you're doing 24-hour, well, dawn to dusk lighting over top of it for boat storage? Yes, it's actually on the draw in there. It's just a couple of dark sky lighting, reduce the light pollution or whatnot. I think there's 
two or three poles there. I'll have to look at the drawing. Okay. Line, so. And this going into a residential area, I do have a hard time with having a residential area having dawn to dusk lighting when people are trying to enjoy themselves and in being sitting outside and everything else. Because this is really in a, a residential zone versus something that's more on a highway or within an industrial zone. So um, that is a major concern that I have. Thank you. To address your question as well, in each of the bills that's before you, there's a proposed condition that any light fixtures be full cutoff light fixtures. And those are basically the dark sky mm -hmm. light fixtures. So that would be a condition for any light or light poles that would be installed. Absolutely. I believe that's listed on the drawing as well, is it not? I think it was on the drawing. Okay. okay. Is there any other questions? Okay, we will open up the, uh, this for anyone here to speak on uh, bill number 5163. Um, come on up, ma'am. I'll, I'll start with James Kniebe. Oh, you, you, you got I people signed in, okay. That's all right. You, you get, who do we have? James Kniebe. James. Okay. Or, sorry. Is it oh, yes. Tammy? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Good job on the last one. You won't. Okay. You won't, you won't get graded on that handwriting. <laughs> you must get, she'll swear you in, ma'am. Do you solemnly swear that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. So I actually wanted to speak about the boat storage unit in particular. Um, I do have some. It'll take a while. Yeah. Photos. Okay. There you so that's upside down. So I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can see, but I know the gentleman said he'll push the fence back. But depending on how far he pushes it back, right now I'm a resident on Hopewell Road. I travel it multiple times a day. Multiple times a day, there are cars blocking the entrance because they're going in and out of the storage area. Um, here's another. So I don't know if you can see, but in the picture I just put up, that's a 90 degree turn. And this storage unit is two miles down Hopewell, which as we already established is a residential area, but also it's in between two 90 degree turns. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, I didn't know how far I had to speak to this. Um, it's in between two 90 degree turns. As you can see in that picture, it's cut off a little bit, but that's a 90 degree turn with a 20 mile per hour speed limit. Multiple times, um, a day also I see there's oncoming traffic with the trailer they cannot stay in their lane in these 90 degree turns and I don't think that this will be local folks that would be storing their boats here because local folks you know as you can see in the picture that one house they have plenty of room and areas to store their own boats so this would be folks probably not familiar with Hopewell probably not realizing you have to slow down very slow around these what were once rural roads that are very curvy with no shoulders whatsoever and it drops off into ditches. So I just feel that it's, you know, not only a safety hazard, it's creating a dangerous roadway conditions for folks who aren't, you know, they may not realize what they're getting themselves into when they say, hey, I wanna store my boat here. But regardless of all that, we do own a one ton truck and we haul trailers a lot and it is hard for us even to get in and out of our own driveway if depending on, you know, if we're, hauling a 40-foot trailer or if we're hauling a 30-foot trailer and I don't know what the restrictions are here for the size of boats so even if you push the gate back 35 40 feet by the time you add in 18 feet for a truck and possibly you know 24 feet 35 feet whatever for a boat it's not going to be enough to get that person off of the roadway to then go punch in the code so right now the way it's set up to open the gate you have to punch in a code so they get out of their vehicle um and they leave it you know hopefully usually it's in the ditch if it's a car in this particular and since the truck is still on hopewell um so i just don't think there's enough room for that type of traffic to go in and out with boats you know folks not familiar with the area but also it's unsightly as we've said i mean we've i was here in 2019 talking about a storage facility on Hopewell that this council unanimously voted against. I moved from Wright City, Warren County. 
my taxes tripled when I moved to St. Charles County. And we were moving away from this type of hodgepodge planning and zoning. And then to have it follow me here to Hopewell Road, a very nice part of the county, it's just, I just can't even fathom if this happens. I mean, Hopewell Mo Road is about five miles long. So you have three miles, you know, if you were to turn right out of the storage facility of residential area, two miles if you were to turn left out of the storage facility of truly just residential area. There's no, you know, you might see a field, but you're not gonna see a business back there. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Can I ask yeah. a question sure. real quick? Mm -hmm. um, so I understand you're against the boat storage. Are you against the lawn care <laughs> service as well or just so, the boat storage? You know, from- Because we I, have two. Yes, I do understand that. So I did sign for B which is the boat storage, okay. which I think it was Bill 5164, Conditional Use Permit 22-15B. Right. Um, the lawn care service, from what I can tell, is there's something already going on because there's people with trailers in and out. Um, I, the gentleman said he just purchased the property, so I don't know if it's his business or it was prior. I'm not sure. But what is going on, I mean, they're already blocking traffic. So I greatly oppose the boat service. You know, if somebody wants to run a small business out of their... I could maybe be okay with it, but they're blocking the street. And there's, so there's two driveways right next to here. Buses stop there all the time. I mean, how can a bus maneuver down the road if they're stopped? You know, because they're going to be in there in the morning time getting their trailers out when the buses are picking up kids to go to school. Okay. So I, you know, I don't know about that one either. But Thanks. for sure, no on the boat. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, mm -hmm. ma could you leave those pictures there for one second? Yes. Terry, can I even ask a question? Sure. sure. Um, Robert, um, on the on the pictures, <clears throat> it looks to me that the fence is on the on the property line. Correct, it's right in line with the telephone pole. Is that correct? Because we don't have a plot plan, so we can't tell. There is a concept plan. Can I begin? My yes. Name? Oh, sorry. 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 Um, there is a concept plan that's attached as part of Exhibit B that illustrates the proposed layout. But you're right. This gate is not set back. Now, <laughs> what's in the the bill before you? There's a uh, proposed condition that says there shall be sufficient space left at the entrance to allow for a vehicle pulling a boat to be uh, full off of Hopewell Road before any gate is installed. I'm not talking about the gate. I'm talking about the fence. The oh, fence the is right on the telephone pole line. And so my point is, is yeah. um, every storage, as far as I know, every storage um, situation that we do in this county, we have been putting in berms and tree lines fir trees and evergreen trees. And the fence would be set back because those would have to be on, on that private property and not on the right of way. So I find that to be um, a little unusual. Okay. Just saying. That's, a, uh, that's why I wanted you to leave that picture up there. Yeah. Uh, that's all. Yeah. All right. Claire, you want to call? Paul Bay. Paul. Do you want to grab your pictures? She'll let you <laughs> Good evening. Do you solemnly swear that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Hi, I live on Hopewell, too. And there's probably $4 million houses, one's right across the street from this. I live up the street now, okay? There's seven driveways within walking distance from this gate. Seven on an S curve. Come on. And you want to put trailers in that? Like you said, the buses turn around in counties a lot where they're doing that. Uh, Pumping station, they stop and back there to turn around so they have to go to Hope and to Hopewell. So the seven driveways are an issue. And that's just not even counting Rob Serrato's place because there's another building that was for sale or not sold yet. Because I think he's trying to bring, uh, let me see if I'm wrong, but there's, they surveyed out from the fence line now to Hopewell uh, going to the million dollar house, okay? And there's a driveway there. There's also another driveway right down from that that I don't even know if you guys know about to this new building that Rob put on his property prior to selling. So there's two entrances right there across from this million dollar home. I don't even know if they got permission to put them on there, but they're there, you know what I mean? Because prior to this, you guys gave Rob, Joe knows about this, Serato uh, unconditional use permit to run a landscape business. Well, he runs a dump truck company out of there. You know what I mean? And that's been going on since whenever. Now it's for sale. So uh, 
I agree with my daughter. That's my daughter. She lives right up the street from me, okay? And there's a lot of kids, and if you guys want, <clears throat> you give me 48 hours, I'll get you 50 signatures, because the last time we did this, I got signatures. I just haven't had time, but I'll get signatures that would say, hey, we don't want this on our street. Are you kidding me? This is kind of silly. You know what I mean? But it's in the wrong spot. But the lawn care business, I think we could live with. You know what I mean? Because they're doing it now. You know what I mean? Which is okay. But the boat storage is a problem. And the reason why is <clears throat> you go up Hopewell, since you guys have changed and allowed 1,200 homes to be built there. They're working on it now. There's been at least a dozen accidents that I know at the, Hopewell of the corner of Hopewell and Highway N. Minimum dozen that I know because I drive down and see it. There's no stoplight. Now you're going to add another 2,000 cars to come up Hopewell on a two-lane road to a stop sign. You know what I mean? So now you want to add 50 boats with trailers to come down that. You know what I mean? And then there's going to have to be roads put in from the subdivision from there's like three builders over there to access Hopewell besides Highway N. Are you kidding about traffic? That's going to be insane. You know what I mean? And it's not even started yet. So the tax dollars you guys are going to get should be able to get you guys enough money to put a, a stoplight up there. But that's fine because we're already doing the homes. But to put this as far as boat storage on these beautiful homes, and like I said, the guy, because I don't think the neighbor's there that lives right across the street, there's no way this guy would have spent a million dollars to put, to put a, a building across the street with boat storage. There's no way, and he bought it from Rob. You know what I mean? And I live right around the corner. I live right up a hill. And besides, that, that, the road floods, okay? That, that road at Hopewell Creek, at Dardine Creek, has flooded at least a dozen times in the last 10 years over the road to the point where if you're driving four-wheel drive truck, you wouldn't drive over it. Now we're making all these changes. And that little pond he's got there, it's about the size of what you guys got back there. That ain't gonna hold no water, not on a flood, you know what I mean? So, and you're talking gravel road. Gravel road don't exhibit water. You gotta have drains, you know what I mean? So, and this is pretty far back from the creek. I would say probably maybe 1,000, 2,000 yards. So that rain, got to go somewhere, you know what I mean? And we're going to have, believe me, Dardine Creek's going to flood like you never saw it once you build these houses because it's not going to absorb in the ground, it's coming off. So I'm just saying, that's why I think the boat storage has got to be silly. But I mean, if you want, you give me 48 hours, I'll get you signatures. I just haven't had time. You know what I mean? If everybody on Hopewell, it would probably not be okay with this. The lawn care business, I think that's a, that it's been going on, so it's okay. But you're going to have to put another fence up because I think he's going to join the property to the other property that he owns adjoined to this, which comes out to that house. So I guess, he, am, I, am I right here, that you're actually trying to take that other piece of property that you got fenced now, then add to the piece that's surveyed to put that other fence there, to put the bolt storage there? I don't own the property, sir. OK, is that what I'm guessing? That's not my property outside the fence. I just own what's fenced in there. All right, so you're going to put all 50 boats inside that fence? There's 51 spots. OK, that's what I'm asking. So what's, what's going on with that? Sir, property? sir. This, this oh, sorry about that. But, sorry, you know, I, mean, I, was looking, I thought this guy was yeah, there, I so okay, I sorry about that. Sure. But I'm just he saying. for us. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. You're the boss. But I'm just saying it's wrong. You know what I mean? And yes, I would say that uh, the seven driveways are the problem. Okay. I mean, we're not talking one or two. We're talking seven drive, And that's not talking if you go another 20 feet, there's two more. You know what I mean? And then if you go down the other way, there's three more. Sure. That's a big deal. You know what I mean? So okay. I just wanted to get my word out there and uh, see what you thank guys you. thought. Thank you. Hey, enjoy your day. <laughs> Thank you. Claire? Arnie Dinoff. Mr. Dinoff. Do you solemnly swear that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the uh, County Council. My name is Arnie C. A. C. Dinoff, County Public Advocate. Um, I was unable to attend the uh, last Planning and Zoning Commission meeting because I was testifying in Jefferson City before some committees. Uh, but I'm highly opposed to Bill 5126 and CUP 23-02. Uh, this is not the proper use of this area for a landscape business. Uh, Mr. Chairman, are you going to be you'll be holding a public hearing on the boat storage next? Is that correct? Yes. So I'll go into those comments. But you, if, there. If, feel free to speak on both of them. If you, it, you know. Gotcha. Both, both speakers have kind of addressed both of them, so we can do that. Okay. Since we're not voting on them tonight, you know. Okay. Sure. In, in my opinion, this is not the proper uh, place or the proper use of public lands, uh, or not public lands, private lands on Hopewell Road. 
Uh, might I remind you the growth of Missouri Highway N is the most growth corridor in our state currently. It comes up routinely monthly at the Transportation Commission meetings that I attend in the County Road Board meetings. And everybody wants to find ways to improve the roadways, uh, both with Hope Roll Road and Missouri Highway N. Now there's major residential and commercial developments going in here. Uh, there are approximately 1,500 homes between unincorporated St. Charles County that are slated. The city of O'Fallon has 1,100 homes um, with the Harvest uh, neighborhood development. Uh, Dwellawa Road, Hopewell and Highway N, the city of O'Fallon, Lake St. Louis, and of course the city of Wentzville. Uh, as I said, this is the most growth uh, area of our state. Um, this is a major collector, collector uh, uh, thoroughfare um, and again, this is not the place to put more traffic uh, onto Hopewell when it's going to be overbundled, uh, overbundled with uh, traffic. I asked Mr. Greisu, the Assistant Director of Administration, that we need to really work on a plan and a proposal to get before the County Road Board to improve Hopewell Road for safety measures, uh, for a shoulder, guardrails. Um, it just, it's not up to par and it's not up to the safety standards of today. And I asked Mr. Greisu to assist in getting that before the County Road Board ASAP. Um, the use of the property in Southwest St. Charles County in this neighborhood in particular, uh, the zoning has its place. And as the speaker before me uh, spoke in the photos that appeared before you, Million dollar homes just don't go right next to a lawn care business or boat storage. And so put yourselves in that, in that um, 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 situation. People want zoning here in St. Charles County. If they didn't want zoning, they'd go to Cooper County or Lincoln County or a county where it's, it, it's, it's just whatever happens, happens, where you actually have several hundred thousand dollar homes next to trailers. And we expect more here in St. Charles County. If you move forward with uh, granting the conditional use permit, I would ask the following conditions uh, be in place or be added by the council. Number one, that any mower maintenance or starting of engines do not begin from uh, until 7 a.m. and cease at 7 p.m. Two, that no unlicensed vehicles remain on the property more than 30 days. Three, that no outdoor, no outdoor storage take place, either fuel, uh, drums of oil, um, um, landscape companies, when they get tractors that are old and dilapidated, they don't want to put the work into it to make them running, they'll just park them outside of the building and let them rot. And so we, want, we don't want that accumulation and we don't want it to turn into a junkyard. That no yard waste or tree waste remain on the outside um, that's come up in previous conditions with previous landscape companies. And as Mr. Uh, Brazel had stated, we really need on this property, since it's right next to a residential neighborhood with million dollar homes, we need a landscaping buffering of a type three barrier. And Mr. Myers can go into those particulars, but basically it's a row of trees, it's a berm, it's a fence, and then another row of um, shrubs and flowers to, um, uh, to have this buffer between the two uh, uses in question. Traffic safety issues are a question here. And the roadway, as I said, needs to be upgraded. I would ask that you get reports from uh, our county traffic safety unit or call the chief up to testify in terms of, I'd like to know how many accidents have been happening on Hopewell, Hopewell Road. And the last issue I want to bring to the council's attention is last year, this council turned down a storage proposal uh, at, on Hope, Hope Road. And I would ask that you turn down uh, both of these issues. This is not the place for it. It's an ever-growing neighborhood. There's better uses of the property. This is valuable property to just waste it on landscape businesses or boat storage. That can be done on a secondary road uh, way in the back of a commercial property, not on our frontage or on our collector roads. And for those reasons, I ask that you turn down this conditional use permit. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Susan Gorris. Good 
Hey, ma'am, we, we need to swear you in there. You go. Do you solemnly swear that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. At the, at the March 15th meeting of the Planning and Zoning, there were no op opposing speakers because the original meeting, this, this proposal was to have been brought up at the February 15th meeting, which got abruptly canceled just a few hours before meeting time. Some, um, some technical difficulty of some type happened. So several of us had been planning to speak at that planning and zoning meeting, but after it was rescheduled, it turned out that none of us were available to be there. So it kind of passed breezily through the Zoning Commission. I have a lot of points I'd like to make. I'll be as quick as I can. Um, people think, well, there's already a salt dome on that property from when it was a, uh, an equipment storage place and when the county had that property. But that was before some of these other homes have been built there. So I don't think that argument stands. The traffic hazards have been uh, pretty well described by my predecessors tonight. I will say that when the original proposal was brought to the PNZ, there was not a proposal to have 24-hour access by the boat owners by means of using a, a gate code. But that kind of came up in the discussion as I watched the video of the March 15th planning and zoning meeting. So I think that is even more alarming that uh, after dark, someone uh, coming down Hopewell Road could encounter a boat trying to maneuver its way, you know, um, and put and store the boat back into the storage facility. Um, back to going to the fence. The black mesh covering that is on that fence right now is already an eyesore, and it's only six feet tall. Um, I looked up heights of boats. Almost every boat, almost every pleasure boat beyond a John boat is going to be visible above a six-foot fence. Even a 14-foot boat will be about 10 feet tall. Um, a 20-foot 20 a 20-foot boat, 10 feet. A 21-foot, 10 feet 8 inches. A 22-foot boat, just under 12 feet. Uh, longer boats sit higher, up 14 feet or so. Um, I got these on a website available to um, any interested parties. Um, most HOAs, am I still on? You are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, most, most HOAs forbid boat storage in their subdivisions. Who wants them? No one. Um, the uh, planting of trees on the plan is only on one side. The, rest, the other three sides are going to be um, uh, very, it'll all be very visible. The trees, and it'll take five or more years for the trees to do their job. Um, the, uh, um, the fencing is not compliant with what the 2030 master plan says is, is ideal. On uh, page 8.9 of the 2030 master plan, it says agricultural design ideals. This is located in an agricultural district. If non-agricultural development is to occur, it should minimize its impacts on natural areas and on nearby farming and agricultural operations. There is a huge uh, horse uh, farm very near this property, by the way. Uh, the following design ideals are appropriate for all rural development that occurs outside of the urban service area. And I particularly noticed point number four, which says 
that you are to incorporate wildlife friendly or rural open fencing rather than solid fencing, probably for deer to pass through, etc. So the fencing that's there now is already non-compliant with the 2030 master plan. Um, I also think that the feasibility of doing all this on a mere three acres is kind of overly optimistic. Um, a fence is supposed to go down the middle, so on one and a half acres you're going to have 15 trucks, I guess, because there are 15 employees that are supposed to be going in and out of this daily. So 15 trucks and trailers on one and a half acres stored in a lean-to. I don't know, I thought a lean-to was only three-sided. And everything says, everything has to be totally, fully enclosed. That was said several times in that planning and zoning meeting of March 15th, which I, of which I was able to watch the video. They kept saying, <coughs> fully enclosed. I don't know. Why is it called a lean to them? But anyway, by the time you put this fence down the middle, how is there maneuverability for boats and trailers on the other one and a half acres? It seems rather, um, it just seems like it's very, not going to happen. Um, the other thing I would like to point out is this is not going back to the 2030 master plan, it, it has the appropriate uses for agriculturally zoned land. It says, uh, this is page 8.9, farming and other agriculturally related uses, including raising farm animals, equestrian activities, breeding and boarding facilities, Vet services, kennels, are appropriate. I see no relationship to a boat storage um, there, and actually, uh, perhaps not even a lawn service. Um, when I talk to a planning and zoning person about my concerns, um, this staff member from Planning and Zoning, who happens to reside in Illinois, told me that uh, the encroaching development with its noise and problems is just inevitable. And he suggested that I move further out to avoid it. So does losing clean air, does losing animal habitat, does losing quiet, which all of those people on Hopewell Road moved there to get, that was their goal, does losing all of that have to be inevitable? These three acres still sit in St. Charles County so far until someone else tries to annex them. So I think you should suggest that the petitioner find a more appropriate place for these two enterprises, perhaps further out. <laughs> not in the middle, <laughs> not in the middle of a residential and agricultural area. Approving CUP 2215 would mean another downgrading of our beloved neighborhood. Please do not let that happen, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, All right. Uh, that uh, will conclude the uh, comment sections on Bill number 5163, and I believe also Bill number 5164. Um, sir? Do I get a chance to respond on any of that? Yes. Yes, you do. Come, come forward. And you've, already, you've already been sworn in, so. So a couple items, yes, the traffic hazards. Um, let's talk about that for a minute. I got the gate moved back 40 foot on the proposed drawing. 
If I need to move it back another 10 foot, another 15 foot, I'm not opposed to that. I want to make it safe. Let's, I can make that change, not, not an issue. Hopewell is a dangerous road. Those 90 degree turns are already there. People are already going to be slowing down to make those turns. Uh, fortunately, I'm located between two 90s. So traffic car there is already going to be going pretty slow. If I move the gate back even further than 40 foot, you've got more enough room with additional 10 foot behind me. Um, moving the gate back 40 foot gets us far enough off the road with a truck and trailer. If you guys want me to go back 50 foot, I'll go 50 foot. It's not an issue. Uh, I'm not trying to make enemies with any of my neighbors by any means. The unsightliness of the boat storage. We have a type two buffer on the north side of the property between me and I think it's 3137 Hopewell. Uh, it's evergreen or confiders or evergreens and then uh, some deciduous trees or whatnot. Um, if it's a big deal behind me, that's already a pretty much commercial property anyways. <coughs> so I don't see why I need something there. But on the south side of me, between me and the other resident, um, there's a field next to me. But if they're concerned about it, if it makes that property <coughs> go away, I'm not opposed to putting a buffer up there as well. Uh, I'm willing to work with these people. I'm not here to make any enemies, I promise. Um, a lot of the anger is coming from the harvest of it, um, the whole neighborhood going up there. That has nothing to do with me. I apologize. That's over a thousand homes going in there. This is a golden opportunity for me to get some boats and storage, pick up some more customers for lawn, uh, landscape, all that good stuff. So the whole harvest issue has nothing to do with me. Harvard, the Hopewell Road is a two-lane road. There's going to be traffic there already. My 10 employees I currently have and my 51 boats are not going to make a difference to traffic on Hopewell Road. Not by any means. The conditional use permits that were, or that were um, permitted before had nothing to do with me as well. I, I, I didn't own the property then. I just closed on the property, I think it was July 29th of last year. Uh, the retention basin area in the front, the rain garden, that meets the county specs. That was developed before I bought it. That was why the price was so damn high on it. Um, the lean-to is in compliance with ordinance 405.080C20. Um, it's an accessory structure, so it does meet those requirements. Uh, everything is drawn to spec. Everything is legal on that aspect. Whereas of right now, we can operate within the, um, the salt dome that's currently there. This was just for future growth or anything else. I wanted to make sure it was included in the drawing. So I didn't come back here 35 times and bother you guys. Um, again, they'll file and deal with the harvest. That has nothing to do with me. Uh, my current operation can fit inside the existing building. We, uh, my property is ag, but we also have an agricultural land improvement plantings and pastures, and we do, you know, stuff for quail as well. So the property that's on the field there, the gentleman asked me if it was mine, if my intentions were to expand over there. I do not own that property. I wish I did. I do not. That is not mine. Uh, I don't think Rob owns it either. I don't know why Rob was even mentioning any of this. Uh, this isn't his permit. This is my permit. The hours that we'd be operating would be no earlier than 6 a.m., and everything would be ceased by 8 p.m., which was legal during the planning and zoning thing. Um, again, I'm not here to make any thing or anybody, any enemies or anything else. My current neighbor now, they have zero complaints about any noise or anything else because we are respectful. We don't, we're not there shooting or anything else. Um, as far as it ever being a junkyard, that will not happen. Um, I know lawn care landscape companies have a bad reputation for letting things go. That's not what we're about. I have a lot of pride in what we do and my boys are very proud of it. So. Um, I'm going to talk to you guys about moving the gate back 50 foot. Um, again, if it's a big issue with my neighbor across the street from me with the big lake, they would like a landscape buffer up there, so be it. Uh, I'll put a landscape buffer there. I'm not opposed to it. Um, we do not have 15 trucks. I have up to 15 employees. Currently, I have 10. Um, there's not that need for 15 trucks. Each employee does not get their own vehicle. Um, I think that's about it. Am I missing anything? <laughs> Okay. Thank you, sir. Is there anybody, any, have any, anyone have any questions? Okay. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Okay, so that will conclude um, our hearings on Bill number 5163 and 5164. Um, okay, we, we still need to read that one. Okay, go ahead and do that, please. Bill number 5164, requested by Michael Herbert, sponsored by Joe Brazel, an ordinance granting conditional use permit CUP 22-15B, for an outdoor storage yard for boats to Hearst Investments LLC and James Hearst BLCS LLC applicant. Okay, thanks. All right. Um, the next bill, uh, CUP, is bill number 5165.
Bill number 5165, requested by Michael Herbert, sponsored by Tim Baker, an ordinance granting conditional use permit CUP 23-02 for a housing unit or units in the R1E district with a minimum lot width of 60 feet and a minimum side yard setback of 6 feet to IPX Thompson 422-296 LLC property owner and MJA Properties LLC applicant. Okay, Mr. Myers. You're already swinging okay. from earlier. Thank you. Um, briefly, this is a request for a conditional use permit for one lot within Hickorydale subdivision. Hickorydale was subdivided in the 1950s and this one lot has remained undeveloped um, for some years. And so we have a developer who would like to build two homes, um, but to do so, they were they're requesting um, narrower lots and a side yard setback is slightly reduced. They're not asking for smaller lot size. In fact, the lot size they're proposing is much larger than the, the minimum in this district. But the, the geometry of the lot that was platted in the 1950s, before we even had <coughs> planning and zoning, is such that in order to build the two homes, um, he's requesting instead of lots 70 feet wide, they'd be 60 feet wide, and side yard setbacks of instead of seven feet, six feet. But again, the, the lot sizes would be 12,000 square feet roughly rather than 7,000 square feet. So they're, they would be relatively narrow but really deep and meet the minimum lot size requirement. So the Planning and Zoning Commission held a public hearing on this and uh, following which they voted eight in favor and zero against with uh, specific conditions that are suggested in the bill that's before you tonight. And if he's here, I'd like to introduce applicant Michael Thompson or any other representative. Mr. Thompson, anyone else representing the, uh, this? Okay, all right, uh, next of all, we'll have anyone that would like to uh, uh, comment or testify on this particular CUP. Claire? I didn't have a separate card. Uh, Arnie Dinoff would like to speak on okay. 5165. You're already sworn in. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the uh, County Council. My name is Arnie C. AC Dinoff, County Public Advocate. Um, Mr. Mr. Chairman, with the uh, the boat uh, issue, I just wanted to go on record. If you could make my comments from the uh, previous public hearing, if you could make my comments, uh, ditto and be part of the t public testimony in Bill 5164, CUP 2215B okay, uh, from the A. Yeah, okay, we can here. do that. Okay, thank you. Um, and then I just wanted to comment real brief on this issue. Uh, it seems to be a pretty cut and dry issue. Um, the homeowner really needs to subdivide the lot, and so I have no opposition, and I ask unanimous approval by the County Council. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Claire, anyone else on this particular CUP? That's the final speaker. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next up is a public hearing. So would you, uh, it's a public hearing, community housing needs and input on the 2023 annual action plan using federal community development block grant funds. Do we have anyone here that would like to testify in the public hearing on this particular subject? Mr. Dino, come on back up. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. I'll be very brief. Uh, my name is Arnie C. A.C. Dinoff, uh, County Public Advocate. And this Community Development Black, Black Grant Fund is supposed to help people who are um, under certain income or thresholds and help them out with uh, certain issues such as dilapidation of homes, uh, siding issues, roofing issues, um, air conditioning for the elderly, uh, hot water tank heater, and you have to meet certain uh, guidelines and you have to live in the property for a minimum of five years. If you move or sell the home within that five years, you would be obligated to pay back what you borrowed from the community block grant fund back to the county. And I believe there's uh, some stipulation of some interest amounts 
uh, that are made. Now, I'm a big believer of uh, less government and not growing our government. And we have a problem here of uh, political uh, jurisdiction or political turf in St. Charles County. I'm calling for the consolidation of our county urban plan, which uh, adds all the municipalities except for the city of O'Fallon. And that urban county plan takes in unincorporated county, which is approximately 155,000 residents of unincorporated county, the city of Weldon Spring, uh, Wentzville, the city of St. Peter's, um, St. Charles, and the little villages and towns such as Augusta, uh, Def um, Augusta, um, New Melly, um, West Alton, um, those type of um, small towns for Estelle. And I would ask the administration to my right to really negotiate this year with the city of O'Fallon. The city of O'Fallon has two full-time staffers that administer approximately uh, $260,000 worth of community block grant funds. It's a duplication of administrative fee, administrative salary benefits, and pension. And I would ask that we consolidate it once and for all countywide and let's save taxpayer money at the federal and the county level. This money of administration with the city of O'Fallon uh, duplicating the same thing that the county does would go to help people in need. People that need these services or these improvements uh, of their homes. And so I really ask that we really work this year to consolidate this program into one administrative, one administrator, which is the city of St. Charles that does the administration on behalf of the county and all the other municipalities, except the city of O'Fallon who has another additional two employees. And it just doesn't make sense why we're wasting the duplication of administrative services. There's a lot of red tape involved, a lot of reporting, a lot of auditing. You have to dot your I's and cross your T's and let's let's bring it in house to one office so that's what i asked mr chairman thank, thank you sir okay anyone else to here to testify on that public hearing okay seeing none we will move on to oh, public Terry, oh yes go we ahead. need to ask questions sure. on this too um on um on this grant how it doesn't say how much the funds are how much how much is the, are the funds Later on the agenda, there's a bill for introduction, and with that, there's a cover bill, or excuse me, a, a cover memo, and it explains that there's a um, little over $1 million. It gives an exact dollar amount, and there's also um, a lengthy description of how the money is proposed to be used. And in essence, our community development block grant funds, which is a 100% grant, federal grant, there's no local match required, but we use, the, our bread and butter is for neighborhood stability and for uh, provide uh, homeowners who need help uh, repairing their home, whether it's the roof or HVAC or whatever, that's kind of our bread and butter. And also another popular program, which is called a public, is a type of public service, but it's uh, provide transit for people that have essential trips and don't have availability for, uh, for cars. For instance, we have people who, take trips for, uh, for chemotherapy and dialysis who are income eligible, and that's the only form of transportation. So there, there's no funding for uh, federally subsidized housing or apartments or any of that nonsense? We have um, $60,000 for rental rehab development program. That goes, and that, that is, that's for people who own the property though? That's for rental units to help someone who has a rental unit who they can make it affordable uh, to help someone in need. And our first preference are uh, veterans, elderly, disabled. And okay. they also must be income qualified. Okay, but no, no money hidden in this somewhere to, to go to apartments or tax abatement credits or any of that stuff? No, there's, uh, that $60,000 is for that rental rehab and <clears throat> Yeah, that's it. Okay, Robert, thank you. Sure. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda is public comments. Uh, just a reminder, uh, if you uh, wish to speak, you certainly are welcome. Please fill out a speaker's card. Um, we uh, do have a, a three-minute uh, three limit, and you can see on the uh, up here that to uh, time it down. Also, we usually accept three, um, uh, three 
speakers for and three speakers against if we have that many on a particular topic. Okay, first speaker. On bill number 5166, Brad Goss. Mr. Chairman, members of the council, my name is Brad Goss, 120 South Central, Suite 700, Clayton, Missouri, 6105. I'm here uh, tonight to just address you on Bill 5166. That's an amendment to an existing conditional use permit, which the council put in place back in 2005. Uh, it's to uh, amend the conditional use permit to allow a greenhouse uh, in the existing wholesale nursery. Uh, John Wingo is here tonight, uh, who is the owner of DJM uh, Ecological Services. He may come up and address you. I don't know if he will or not, uh, but I'm here to answer any questions uh, if the council has them. Okay. Thank you, sir. Claire? Jim Kelly. Who? Jim Kelly. Mr. Kelly. <laughs> come on down. Come on down. You don't not have to be sworn. Not, 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 this is not. Yeah, you don't have to be sworn in for this one. That was early. Oh, I don't have to be. That was okay. early. <laughs> Sorry about that. We we trust you just as much, though. <laughs> I have that that trusting face. Huh? <laughs> yeah. uh, I didn't think. I thought we were going back to the uh, the bill fifty one sixty six. Yes, you can, you can come, speak on whatever. Yes. You okay. Wants. Yeah, I, I I'm not. I, I'm against it because yeah. Mr. Wingo has stated that it takes two people to run that nursery. And then a, a, a paragraph later, he's saying there's going to be five or six employees coming down. My question is, does St. Charles County Planning and Zoning allow a prairie restoration business to be ran on agricultural zone property? We can try to get an answer for that. Okay. The only reason I'm asking is I've, I've been talking to a gentleman that has the same kind of business that Mr. Wingo has. A, a, a prairie and wetland restoration business does the exact same thing. I told him I'd sell him my property. And he said, that would be great. He says, I've been trying to get, to get over on the Missouri side to run, you know, to pick up business. And I said, well, I said, I'm going to the St. Charles County tonight. I said, let me ask him if they accept a prairie restoration business being ran on property zoned agricultural. And if so, then what do I need to do? Just get a just get a uh, conditional use permit for a uh, a nursery, and then I can run my my prairie restoration business off my property. Well, that would be a question that you'd have to ask Mr. Myers and the planning and zoning folks. And well, I mean, you. will I get that answer tonight? I mean, that's I've never gotten any answers. That's why I come to these things, and nobody's ever been able to address any of my questions. I, I think we can get, uh, you know, if you leave your, your name and um, number, I'm sure that Mr. Myers or somebody in planning and zoning. I think Mr. Meyer, I've, no. I've, I've had quite a few conversations with him. Okay. As a matter of fact, Mr. Meyer came out last year and did not find uh, any evidence that they were actually running a wholesale nursery out of there. And that's why he opened up a zoning violation. You know, and uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it, I just don't understand it. But if zoning, if planning and zoning allows a prairie restoration business to operate on property that's zoned agricultural, that's what I'd like to know. Thanks. Thank you. Claire? Vernon Jackson. You don't have to be sworn in, sir. Okay. Yes, my name is Vernon Jackson. I'm a resident at 2109 Ebert Lane. My property uh, immediately adjoins to the east of the uh, parcel here, the nursery operation. And I personally have never had any problem with the operation. To me, it seemed like agricultural zoning, uh, prairie restoration, uh, fell into agricultural use. Uh, when I moved out there back in 19, uh, what was it, 76, I had soybeans and uh, uh, corn around us, and we were one little community, and I've never had any issues with it uh, uh, as far as what's going on up there. Uh, I, I know they've helped out county parks and various things. The other uh, situation is that uh, 
due to the equipment that they've used for their nursery business, they're also able to maintain, uh, help maintain our road uh, grading and, and uh, snow removal in the wintertime. I used to have to get out with my little, years ago with my little Kubota and try to plow the, the road out and they keep it cleared out and uh, very beneficial to all of us. Uh, yeah, there's a few cars that go up and down the street, uh, people coming to work and going home, but it's not really a whole lot more than the people that live on the street. So I, I have no uh, opposition to it. And as I said, I'm immediately uh, to the east of that location. Uh, any questions? Thank you, sir. We appreciate your comments. Thank you. John Wingo, this is a speaker card that came in after seven. Okay, it's fine. And we'll have a couple more. Okay. Mr. Wingo. I, uh, I've been at that one. Right there in the middle, sir. There Sorry. You That's right. I'm technologically impaired. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I've been at that location for 18 years now and maintained the road for the past 17 and really not had any problems. Uh, the council approved uh, after my explanation of what it was we did back in 2005 and initiated that bill, you know, after we'd done Indian Camp Creek Park and I left a lot of examples of work done in St. Charles County as far as the ecological restoration and nursery business and it's worked well. We've, uh, I feel, been an asset to the community. I had my uh, estimating department <coughs> rough out the numbers for what I've put into maintaining the road there on Ebert Lane, and it roughs out to around $263,000 over the past uh, 18 years by the time you would patch the road and, and do the snow plowing and everything. So I feel I've pretty much got a leg to stand on with the history. Uh, the last time this uh, expansion was approved, I got it approved with a pole barn that was rather large on that property. And uh, after the commercial building regulations got thrown into the mix, it just got out of hand. I could not afford it. So uh, I did not update my site plan and that's where we wound up with our zoning violation and that. Since that time, I've spent over $5,000 in updating the site plan and <clears throat> hiring Brad to present that and, and get me up to speed. But, uh, you know, I'd appreciate your help here on this one. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Claire? On bill number 5167, Kelly Roth. Good evening. Good evening. This is uh, <clears throat> regarding the rezoning of, from an A to a C1 at 2501 South Highway 94. I re represent the family at 2546 South I Highway 94, which is in win within the 1,000 foot radius of the prop subject property. Uh, we are opposed to this change of uh, zoning. It's not appropriate for the area as it's a wholly residential neighborhood consisting of executive type homes and legacy family homes and not businesses. It will interfere with the privacy, peace and enjoyment of the current adjacent property owners, uh, which they currently experience or entitled to for themselves and their families. This change will negatively impact the integrity of this residential neighborhood, currently a safe and quiet neighborhood of families will cause increased disruption due to additional noise, pollution, car, and pedestrian traffic within the neighborhood. Mr. Swanson, I appreciate your comments about the dawn to dust lighting, that you were concerned about private enjoyment of the, and not interference of that lighting to the adjacent property, so are we. Um, this may negatively impact the future property values of, this, of the adjacent property owners. It opens the door for potential future commercial development in the immediate neighborhood, which will negatively impact the qualities that make this residential neighborhood a desirable and attractive one to live 
in peace without interference and <coughs> disruption of business together with the attributes associated with said businesses. It is suggested that the applicant consider either moving their proposed business to their own property, which they can do down on Highway F, or to move it to Defiance or up to D and Double D. We again respectfully request this com for you to uh, deny this uh, change of zoning from the A to the C1. Thank you for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Claire? Tiffany Winkler. Sure. He needs to fill out a card. No, go ahead. No. Oh, I don't want to talk. Oh, can I talk with her? I'm her husband. Sorry, I didn't know to fill out a card. I apologize. Um, so we, we, you know, we went round and round and round with planning and zoning, and, and uh, they were extremely helpful in guiding us the right way to go on this deal. Um, this is the only way to go. We, I think uh, Mr. Baker was there, um, tried to even try to find some gray area. Look, I'm a cattle guy. Inputs are key to me. I don't want C1, but that's the only way that I'm able to do this. All we're doing is putting up a little barn and selling our beef. Um, I think we need to look at maybe finding something in the middle of C1 and agricultural for this in the future. If we do get C1 and that does come about, trust me, I'll come back to you and say, hey, let's get out of C1. I want my inputs as low as possible so I can provide our beef to people at a fair rate. Um, you have anything? Um, just that we've we purchased this last May and we've been working we've done lists and lists of things to try to keep it agricultural and we were told that we had to grow what we were selling on the property to have it a commercial farm stand and we can't have a cow on an acre and a half so that's why we are going about trying to get it commercial the plans haven't changed it's still the same it's a little farmhouse downward lighting we've got buffers um, we actually on uh, another piece of our property on F, we have Fursella's leasing the back 30 acres, and Fursella's is gonna come in and re-beautify that corner. We took everything down so that the traffic's already coming in and out of there. Um, whenever it's nice out, whenever um, the weather's good. So we're not, um, we don't foresee more traffic coming than what's already there. But it is the cornerstone of defiance. So to taking everything down and having the trees put back in that beautifies the corner yeah. yeah and you know everything that we have to do to make it appealing to everybody obviously we're going to do that we have no desire to not make it appealing um, the only other option is to keep it agriculture i can throw a bull out there on a 24 by 100 foot pen um, that's not going to smell good but then i can throw up a um, a little shack you know we're trying to do this where it's going to be nice so when people do come in through the area it's going to be nice I do not want to build a feed lot there that's not our goal to do I, you know um, so that's why we're asking for the C1 again we find a different way I'll be the first one in here to come back and get it out of C1 and get it into something else thank you thank you Claire Lawrence Crane. I thought it would be helpful. You don't need to swear me, right? No. If the council members want just copies of this to help you approach. Hi there. Um, my name is Lawrence Crane. Uh, I live at 2564 South Highway 94. We're about uh, 150 feet down the road from the property and on the other side of the, uh, uh, of, of the Highway 94. Um, I'm here to speak in opposition to this bill that would rezone it. Um, I'm a retired Air Force officer and a small business owner and my wife Kay is a retired labor and delivery nurse who now paints portraits and landscapes, which she didn't want me to tell me of, but I think she should. Uh, in addition to, to our home, which is a home in three acres, we also own uh, three more parcels, which you can see on the map there. In fact, let me bring up the map that, that's up here 
so I can point to them. Um, this is our home here. This is the uh, basically a, 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 far, a farm property that uh, the farmhouse was unfortunately destroyed by uh, renters. Um, the uh, rental, pro or excuse me, uh, uh, Charlie Roth lives up here, which was the, the, the previous speaker. Is that working? Yes, the wonders of modern technology strike again. Um, what you see there is the uh, red triangle is in fact the property that, uh, that is in, in question. Um, we have had a, a written filing where we presented five ob objections, but I really want to focus tonight on the negative permanent impact on our, our neighborhood here. We brought out here in defiance uh, after we lived for a dozen years in New Jersey just to escape the urban crowding, to uh, raise our two children who've now both been launched, and to retire safely and peacefully. Uh, we've been here for 33 years. We expect to, re uh, to be here until basically they come to carry us away. Um, in my wife's case, that's probably another 20. In my case, I'm already on borrowed time. <laughs> um, many of our neighbors basically did the same, uh, whether they're old folks like us or whether they're some of the younger people who have just recently moved out there and have are building uh, and moving into the executive homes up here. Um, so it's a very nice neighborhood. If you look at all of the green there, we're talking basically family farms, uh, residential areas, and then the areas down here are basically the, uh, the, the floodplains. So there's not gonna be anything down there. But all along Highway 94 from the Bush Wildlife Area all the way down to Defiance where you start to get into the, the city of the city. <laughs> the, the, the small town of Defiance, that's the uh, uh, Defiance Ridge <coughs> Vineyards there. But all of this, with a couple of exceptions, um, are all residential agriculture or um, family farms. Um, frankly, any commercial establishment uh, cited where that red uh, triangle is there is, is gonna impact this. And I'm particularly and, concerned and because sir, if they do... Your time is up, sir. That was the, the buzzer that okay, went off. Okay, I'm but. sorry. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Like I say, I'm in, I'm in objection to that. Uh, okay. I invite you to re read our written comments. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dan Clint. Tripp. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dan Tripp. Uh, I am one of the owners of Good News Brewing Company in Defiance, Missouri, in Augusta, Missouri. I am the Defiance Merchants Association on the board, uh, also a member of the St. Charles County Tourism Commission. Uh, I believe this is an excellent use for this property for several reasons. Uh, one, it's a very small piece of property, and I don't see any possible use of a future home being built here. Um, but as a Defiance Merchants Association uh, board member, I know the Winklers are an active members of this and they play a vital role of the economic development in wine country. And so they support that and I think that's an important use of this property to help that. Um, this area has been wine country for a very long time. It's a, an area for tourism, and for economic development, uh, the, the county loves to promote this area. And as it was said earlier, I think this, the, the property that they are designing for this would be an excellent use when you round that corner to come into Defiance to see a beautiful building that is put together um, that's supporting economic development. Um, again, I think it's an important use of this property. Also, it's nice to see individuals developing this area and not one single person who doesn't live here with millions of dollars, billions of dollars, buying up land and taking it over, and we have no control over it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Claire? Tracy Peeper. Hello. Hello. Um, I'm Tracy Peeper. I live, oh, we're, I live on that map. Um, <laughs> I'm, with, I'm within a thousand feet radius of the property. Um, that we're currently speaking about. Um, when you look out my back windows, I can see this property. So I'm, it will impact me directly. It's not just near me, it's, I can see it. Um, <clears throat> the tornado that took down this house affected me. It came right through down F, across the yard behind me, 
hit me and kept going. So um, the trees that used to hide my house from 94 aren't there anymore because of the tornado. So I've offered to buy and plant trees to the people that live on 94 right there to help give me that privacy back. They're not interested for whatever reason. Um, a couple points. When you turn the corner, you see houses that people live in, not stores. Um, if this gets changed, the people right across the street, they want to change their zoning for a wedding venue. Then there's another piece of property that they're interested in changing also. So it won't just be this one small little shop that I admit I've seen the drawings. It's, it's attractive, but I don't, I don't want the domino effect of then other properties getting the zoning changed also because that will change the community that we, I've lived there for six years now, we built out there for a reason, not to have a bunch of commercial properties behind us. Um, Tiffany messaged me directly. Um, I have been working with the county for almost a year trying to make a commercial farm stand happen on the agricultural land. The county is telling me I have to grow what I'm selling on that land. She owns land right now that houses her animals that she could build this on. It's less than a half of a mile down the road. Why doesn't she do that? Why do we have to change this zoning on this tiny little piece of property that later she says that she couldn't even put one cow out there? So it kind of contradicts her husband of putting a bull out there. Um, she says, um, I bought four properties on Highway F to try to keep it as rural as possible. That's always my goal. Why does she think that we want commercial property in our backyard, but she doesn't want it in her backyard? I think that's all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, ma'am. Elizabeth Bland. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Bland. I live at 441 Matt's Way, two doors down from uh, Tracy. And again, all of us can see this from the back sides of our homes. And I think the biggest concern we have is we feel like planning and zoning went against their oath of office, which is to uphold the master plan. The master plan for this area is agriculture and agricultural tourism. Staff suggested voting against this because they said we don't want to set precedents for spot zoning and that's what this is this is going to be spot zoning in an area that is completely surrounded by agricultural and residential properties this property can have a home on it i've talked to planning and zoning they said because there was a home there previously it is grandfathered in it can have a home rebuilt on this property the winklers um, again, they have 25 acres down Highway F that they could easily file for conditional use under agricultural tourism and put this business right there. Allowing this zoning allows for potentials for churches, gas stations. Yes, a gas station can go in there. We, it was talked about at planning and zoning. This property is slightly bigger than what Double D Market is on. So yes, a gas station could go in there. A CVS or a Walgreens could go in under this zoning. And I think when we make the decisions that when you vote on this, we can't look at what the Winklers are proposing because like staff said in planning and zoning said, they are under no obligation to do what they are proposing. Once this is zoned commercial, commercial one, they can do anything that falls within the guidelines of C1 zoning. And that's what we're against. We're not necessarily against the farm market they want to put up to sell meat. We are against what could happen with this zoning. Yes, this is a local small business that wants to go in there, but we all know there's a family with a lot of money and money talks. And when this gets that C1 zoning and that family that keeps coming to our area wants to buy this land, they will now have the ability to put in anything that falls under that C1 zoning. How much time do I have? Um, so basically, sorry, I talk very fast, but it gets me to get all my comments in. Um, again, the main reasons we're against this are there, there's absolutely no reason to put a piece of commercial zoning smack dab in the middle of residential homes, multi-million dollar homes that are going in that area. 
there's other property that could be developed in that area for more multi-million dollar homes which brings in tax pavers people that pay sales tax um, it's absolutely not the right area to put a piece of C1 property and to be honest we'd all rather have one bull on that property than have it zoned C1 uh, Claire there are two more speakers I think we'll allow, we'll allow them. okay um, Larry Smith Hello, I'm Larry Smith. I live at 431 Highway F, which is a short distance down the road from the subject property. Um, I really think it's a neat idea. The, uh, the idea of farm to table has kind of taken off in the last few years, and this gives us an opportunity to have that right in our neighborhood. Uh, that would be really great. I really think it's a great idea. Um, to respectfully uh, disagree with some of the previous times, uh, previous speakers, the um, nice, quiet residential neighborhood. We got a quarry right down the street from well, 500 yards away, probably from that property. Um, we've got the Defiance Roadhouse, which on many Saturdays during the summer, you got 100 to 200 Harleys coming in. I can hear them from over over a mile away they're pretty noisy and we got wineries in the area that have weddings on Saturday nights I can sit on my front porch three quarter of a mile away and uh, sing along to the music and watch the fireworks and all that stuff anyway so there's I just wanted to say I'm in favor of it. I think it's a really neat idea thank you thank you sir Karen Lyons Uh, I am also in favor of the farm stand concept. Um, there's comments that this is, uh, the area is a residential area. It is a residential and commercial area. Um, Mr. Smith just mentioned some of the commercial properties. There are multiple commercial properties within uh, the corner area of the Winkler's property. Um, so it is not purely residential. I've been a resident in the area over 45 years. Um, long before the Matsway property um, and lots of other of those properties. And so uh, I, I think it would have been great if somebody didn't maybe develop a subdivision, but they did and it was approved by a consul probably or whatever and and it's here so that that's fine new wineries have come a golf course has come down on Schlersburg Road Highway F is way more crowded than it was 40 years ago but we live and that's progress um, so I don't see the traffic for this venue uh, that the Winklers are proposing to be uh, have any effect in comparison with all the other traffic that we have in the area. Um, close to what they mentioned, executive homes is a lawn service on Highway 94. So uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, the, the way things are, are uh, being stated that it's uh, truly um, just that it's a commercial property um, I'm also in favor of the fact that it's a local owner and not an out-of-area owner so thank you very much for your thank time thank you ma'am okay on bill, on bill number 5168 Charles Ward
Good evening, my name is Charles Wardle, and I am the, one of the engineers working on this project, and I'm here to answer any of the county council's questions when it comes up. So just let me know if you have any questions on them. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, Claire? On bill number 5169, Carol Pitzer. This is not relevant. No, no. It's okay. Thank you. Hi, I'm Carol Pitzer, and I'd like to um, speak about RZ23-03. I'm representing actually three families tonight. Um, Lindsay Widener and Jessica Howe were planning to attend, but um, Lindsay's husband had an accident, and so they're in the emergency room now, and their son is um, being babysat by Jessica Howe's family. So Lindsay basically said, um, don't hurt the people around this property. There's currently one house on little over three acres, and I understand the sellers want to rezone it to be able to sell it to a possibility of 12 to 13, uh, to, a, to a builder, so that 12 to 13 houses could, up to that many houses can be built on that property. Um, Jessica said that every new subdivision or low, dense, or low density housing brings water damage to their property. The last time we had a subdivision that was built next to them, um, or <coughs> very close to them, is uh, one house over basically. They said there wouldn't be any water damage to their property and there has been a lot of water damage and their trees have died, they can't grow grass. It's basically a marsh there where mosquitoes are so bad and other um, insects that the subdivision that built there sent someone out to their house to, to the, um, spray their yard at their cost. So um, that's how bad it already is. So they don't uh, think that, they don't want to take the chance of this happening and make it in any, any worse, and it is. Um, this is about density and houses tiled on top of all the apartment complexes. By the way, we're being inundated with all these complexes, and I hope that you guys would tell me what they're being built for since you're approving them. And I know I've heard that the majority of them have been for senior housing, but I can't believe there that's many that the need for that many senior housing complexes. So um, the subdivision I live in is very near to this property. We have homes built on acreage in my subdivision. Our home is built on three and three quarters acres. We built here 30 years ago because it was insulated from height density. We thought it was insulated from other buildings being, um, other houses or subdivisions being built. This would bring more people in on the taxes we paid for our roads and will bring in more pedestrian traffic congestion. Ma'am, that, that's your three Oh, that's mine? Up. It is. Oh, darn. <laughs> hey, I'm speaking for three families. I know. But Can wait, I get two I, more minutes? No, you don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Thank you, ma'am. Jim Garofalo. Good evening. I'm Jim Garofalo. I'm a resident in Addison Park, which is adjacent to the property in question that they're wanting to, to rezone. And initially all we kept hearing was they just wanted to sell this property. So a number of us showed up at the zoning commission meeting a month ago to hear what the property owner had to say. And they had a number of just different possibilities. Maybe they would sell it as is. Maybe they would build properties. They never said that they wouldn't build additional facilities to house these disadvantaged and disabled individuals. They thought they might tear the structure down. Um, they said they might sell it to a builder if they got it rezoned to the 10,000 square foot lots. So it brought concern to all of us and we continue to raise concerns. 
one of the things that they didn't do at the zoning commission meeting was have a plan for the intended use of this property they had a lot of possibilities but not an intended use and i thank mr baker for voting no at the the commission meeting because they don't have a plan and that's what the planning and zoning commission should be doing is evaluating whether the intended use is in the proper zoning they talked a lot about selling this to a builder that would sell it easier if they did it in 10,000 square foot lots and they could make more money. Again, that's not the intended purpose of this. It's whether it fits into this community and we don't feel like it does. So there's really three different problems that we have. One is the intended use of what they're gonna do. If we allow the zoning to go through and I hope you consider voting no, because if we vote to let them rezone it, then they have the possibility of building these other facilities and or they can uh, sell it to a builder that they can build uh, these 10,000 10, square foot homes on it. I would think the DDRB had a board of directors and if they really had an intended use, we would have gotten some direction from their board of directors what their intended use. I don't think they have a plan. I don't think you should vote to approve this without an intended plan because it leaves open to the possibilities of a lot of things that are detrimental to the community. Um, if they rezone this to 10,000 square foot lots, they're gonna have to build a road out to Nost. There are nine roads that dump out onto Nost right now within a half a mile of where that property sits. And uh, they're about 500 feet apart. There's a confluence of all those roads and the traffic conditions at that entrance on a blind curve is gonna cause traffic issues. And it's gonna be dangerous, it's gonna cause safety issues. The other piece of it is if they do build these additional assisted facility uh, type of housing, it's gonna become a draw on the EMS and the emergency services in that area. We know that in other areas of the city where they built this, we have emergency and police into those facilities multiple times a day and multiple times a week. We don't think it's what's right for the community and we stress you to vote no on the topic. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Peg Capo. I'm Peg Capo, I'm the Executive Director of the Developmental Disabilities Resource Board, and Dan Dozier's here from the board. Hi, I'm Dan Dozier, I live in St. Charles County and been on the De Developmental Disabilities Resource Board for over 20 years. We're here to answer any questions that you may have regarding uh, this item. Uh, the board is asking for the rezoning to match the master plan of the county, as well as to give us some opportunities uh, in the future Currently, uh, it is over three acres on the property and um, frankly, uh, a home for the developing this disabled, we don't need three acres. It's too much ground for us to maintain and continue to use so this would give the board the maximum options uh, uh, for future use of that property. The one point I want to clarify is that it will not be used to build multiple homes for people with developmental disabilities. That isn't allowed. It wouldn't be funded. It's not appropriate, and it would. It is absolutely not a possibility for use of this property. If you have any other questions, we'll be in the audience. Which, which uh, bill are you speaking on? Uh, Fifty-five one six nine. Yeah, five one six nine on Canals Road. Six <coughs> nine. Thanks. Okay, thank, thank, you. Right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Laurie Okay. <laughs> county Settlement Covenant, St. Charles County Preamble. We the people living in the land living on the land in St. Charles County, Missouri a free and independent nation equal state in order to live together in harmony under common law of the almighty creator to facilitate the avoidance of disputes to facilitate the quick settlement of disputes which might arise to provide for organized defense of life liberty and private property to protect and administer public property for the benefit of the inhabitants 
and to make certain limited agreements with other settlements of sovereign people for mutual benefit, ordain common accord and recognition of the following. Notice, date February 5th, 2023, come now inhabitants of St. Charles County by absolute writ of habeas corpus and with absolute resolve rebut all corporate authority. County Settlement Covenant in St. Charles County, Original Assembly and Library of Records on date February 5th, 2023 gives this county settlement announcement. St. Charles County Settlement Covenant and in harmony with all 114 counties we find and in all 50 states we find. Article one, by almighty God granting us freedom. By unanimous decree, the local peoples in local peaceable lawful assembly and settlement covenant in Missouri, a free and independent nation equal state. A member with other free and independent states also known as Republic for the United States of America set forth the following affirmations. Section one, local people and family of man and woman centered in almighty God live on local land and use wayland and people jurisdiction and grace affirmed by the authority of the unanimous declaration of independence circa 1776 and bill of rights articles, the first, fifth, seventh, ninth, 10th and 11th circa 1787 through 1791 and 2010 and beyond beyond the reach of predator others and also living in friendships and in peace. Treaties circa 1789 through 1791 and beyond. Beyond the reach of predator others and also affirmed by Article 5 of the Judicial Power, Sections 4, 6, 8, 17, circa 1820 Missouri Constitution and the Covenant of Missouri, a free and independent nation equal state, circa 2021. This entire document may be viewed at the St. Charles County Records Librarian or by email at info at or by mail at 2464 Taylor Road, Suite 112, Wildwood, Missouri 63040. There are 13 pages total to this document. Notice to agents is notice to principals. Notice to principals is notice to agents. Thank you, ma'am. Arnie Dinoff. Mr. Dinoff. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of council. My name is Arnie C. A.C. Dinoff, County Public Advocate. I would like to request the option of filing an online public comment card similar to the city of Darden Prairie or the city of Wentzville, which Mr. Swanson is very familiar with. It gives people an extra option um, to file online with uh, your chief of staff and your uh, county council staff member. Uh, I'm in opposition to reducing citizen public hearings uh, from two meetings to one public hearing for traffic regulations. Let's keep bill 5160 like it is currently and allow for two public hearings. I ask you charge no fee to the Missouri Department of Natural Resources and bill number 5173 for a trail license between Missouri Bluffs Park and the Katy Trail State Park. And I'm highly frustrated with the games, energy, and waste of time since January between myself, Mr. Elman, Ms. Lycom, Mr. O'Sullivan, and Ms. Vaught of your county council staff. Uh, since December, with my opposition to the hundreds of thousands of dollars for lobbying services in the 2023 budget. And my fellow county residents are um, also upset with you, your political games, and withholding valuable county information. People watch the meetings and email or text me after the meetings for several days. I appeared and testified at the March 27th County Council meeting, uh, and I requested previous, since January, email legislative updates from Mike Gibbons, former senator and great friend of Mr. Elman here, Tom Dency, former St. Charles County Senator. Hundreds of thousands of dollars are going for these fees, lodging, travel, and meals uh, at our uh, expense. Mr. O'Sullivan, you earn a salary of $175,000 benefits, lifetime pension. I expect more from you. On March 30th, 2023, you sent me a letter. And it, I quote, if my understanding is incorrect, you are invited to provide additional clarification, end quote. Very simple request, Mr. O'Sullivan. Again, you're not looking at me. You're looking down at the ground. 
I now am once again renewing my Chapter 610 request for all legislative updates for Mike Gibbons or Gibbons Workman LLC, Tom Dempsey, lobbyist or First Capital Advisors, past weekly updates, Mr. O'Sullivan. Past weekly updates. Not future updates, Mr. O'Sullivan and county staff. Mr. O'Sullivan, Mr. Elman, Ms. Lycom, Ms. Vaught, uh, why do we continue to play these games? All of you sitting on this dais get the weekly legislative updates from two of your very $100,000 lobbyists, and I expect to receive the same. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. James Hurst. Mr. Hurst. I just want to touch again with you guys on the property at 3133 Hopewell. Uh, compared to the devastation that's been caused by the harvest subdivision going in, my property was developed for use and I'm using it for its highest and best use. Uh, I mean, it's a gyro gravel lot, a section of its asphalt, it's got the salt dome building on it, it's a fence around it. Uh, it's, zoned ag, it's zoned ag, so what I'm trying to do there is well within the ag regulations and the ordinance and everything else. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, but if, I'm trying to use it for the best and highest use. I bought it for so thank you thank you sir uh, <coughs> anyone else I don't have any more speaker cards but you may want to check I feel like is there anyone else that uh, would like to speak on any particular topic okay all right seeing none we move on to uh, the consent agenda is there any items to be removed from the consent agenda we have a report. oh oral report from the county executive I'm, so, I'm sorry Thank you. Okay. Now we uh, move on to the uh, consent agenda. Are there any items to be removed from the consent agenda? Motion to approve. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Consent agenda has been approved. Next up is bills for final passage, beginning with bill number 5160. Bill number 5160, an ordinance amending section 310.010, procedures for traffic regulations and establishing emergency road regulation powers, ordinances of St. Charles County, Missouri. Okay, are there any questions or comments on this particular bill? Mr. Swanson. Thank you, sir. Uh, I did have an opportunity to speak with staff after my last concerns. Everything's been addressed. Mr. Lyons did a good job explaining what's going on and what's gonna happen. I have no concerns at this time. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, please call the roll. An ordinance amending section 310.010, procedures for traffic regulations and establishing emergency road regulation powers, ordinances for St. Charles County, Missouri. Councilmember Swanson? Yes, ma'am. Councilmember Brazel? Councilmember Elam? Yes. Councilmember Hollander? Yes. Councilmember Hammond? Yes. Councilmember Schneider? Councilmember Baker? Yes. Mr. Brazel's here. Bill number 5161. An ordinance approving agreement with the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission for improvements needed to reduce congestion on I-70 by constructing a north outer road extension and relocation of ramps from Route 94 to Zumbel Road. Questions or comments on Bill 5161? Seeing none, please call the roll. An ordinance approving agreement with the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission for improvements needed to reduce congestion on I-70 by constructing a north outer road extension and relocation of ramps from Route 94 to Zumbel Road. Councilmember Brazel? Yes. Councilmember Elam? Yes. Councilmember Hollander? Yes. Councilmember Hammond? Yes. Councilmember Schneider? Councilmember Baker? Yes. Councilmember Swanson? Yes, ma'am. Bill number 5161 passes. The last bill for final passage is Bill 5162. Bill number 5162, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to accept from the Office of Workforce Development of the Department of Higher Education and Workforce Development $20,000 of Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act discretionary funds available to the St. Charles County Department of Workforce Development in order to provide training to at least 10 eligible adult and or dislocated workers. Questions, comments on Bill 5162? What, what exactly is this? Who's doing this? Anybody? Someone? Well, it doesn't matter. Yes. That's all right. I'm, I won't be supporting this because every time we get money from the federal government on teaching employees to train, it's some kind of woke program, so I won't support it. Are there any questions for this? Any questions? Mm -hmm. Are there any questions? 
No questions? Okay. Um, any other comments for uh, this particular bill? Seeing none, please call the roll. An ordinance authorizing the county executive to accept from the Office of Workforce Development of the Department of Higher Education and Workforce Development $20,000 of Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act discretionary funds available to the St. Charles County Department of Workforce Development in order to provide training to at least 10 eligible adult and or dislocated workers. Councilmember Elam? Yes. Councilmember Hollander? Yes. Councilmember Hammond? Yes. Councilmember Schneider? Councilmember Baker? Yes. Councilmember Swanson? Councilmember Brazel? No. Okay. Bill number 5162 passes. Uh, next up are bills for introduction, beginning with Bill 5166. Bill number 5166, requested by Michael Hurlbert, sponsored by Joe Brazel, an ordinance amending ordinance number 05-198, granting conditional use permit number 655 for a nursery to Luter Prairie Farms LLC property owner. Questions or comments on this particular bill? Mr. Uh, Mr. Bass, go ahead. Yeah, on, on this particular bill, this gentleman has been running his business for almost 20 years, and um, it is zoned agriculture, which nurseries are agricultural. And I did speak to Mr. Kelly multiple times, and uh, uh, is he, I don't know if he's still here, but and, and Robert Robert talked to him as well. And the the uh, to me, it's it, if you're a prairie a prairie restoration or nursery, I, I it's they're growing plants and they're. They're, they're growing their plants, that, from what I understand, for green roofs, for vegetated roofing, for that kind of thing. It's still a nursery, so I don't understand, I don't really understand the, um, the opposition in that regard. Um, and I also know that all the neighbors, I've talked to the other neighbors, and they do say that the Ringel family always takes care of the road and does a good job with that. And so therefore, people are very appreciative of that, so I do support this. Okay. Any other questions or comments on Bill 5166? Okay, seeing none, we move on to uh, bill number 5167 for introduction. Bill number 5167, requested by Michael Hurlbert, sponsored by Jill Brazel, an ordinance amending the zoning district map of the County of St. Charles, Missouri by rezoning land from A, Agricultural District, to C1, Neighborhood Commercial District, per application RZ23-01. Questions or comments on this particular bill? I got some. Yeah, I just, um, okay, so to give you the backdrop on this, the Winklers are cattle farmers. They have... Um, acreage on highway f large acreage and they also have large acreage in miller county and they got a couple hundred head of cattle and that's what they do and so they went to uh this house was a house at f94 that was destroyed by the tornado so it's a little more than an acre acre and a half something like that and so no one's going to build a house there it's just not going to happen and so they wanted to put a, a farm stand there by all rights they could put a farm stand there I mean, they don't need, it's permissible. They have to, they have to put their stuff on there. They're, they have to have their cattle or if they grow stuff or have honey and from their bee farm or whatever, they have to sell their stuff. And then the county was going back and forth with them and say, well, if you do this, maybe you could do a commercial farm stand. So, and Robert will testify to this. I and mean, when I talked about it, I want to get a clear picture of this. And so it finally got it kind of into, from the county telling them what they need to do, kind of pushed them to make it commercial. And they drew it up. They have the drawings. It's going to be a, look like a barn. It's going to look agriculture. It actually is agriculture, but they were told to go commercial. And so they're going to sell their beef. It's going to be a meat shop. And, they're going to, and then going to commercial, they're going to sell other people's honey and other stuff, vegetables and fruits and stuff like that. So it is agriculture. It does fit to the, the ag, tis, uh, agriculture tourism district. Um, and they made comments. I was talking to Mr. Meyer about this, too, about... Well, they could make it, they could sell it. Well, they're not going to do that. They're part of the community. They're not going to sell it and make it a gas station or any of that stuff. But even if they were going to do that, it, the lot's not big enough for that, for a, a, a um, commercial septic tank and all that. There's already a septic tank on it that they're gonna, probably going to use because it was. it's not that old, but the house isn't there anymore, and the foundation, they're going to use the foundation. So, and the traffic, if, if you really look at this, for selling meat from the area, do you really think if you had a house with five kids or four kids, you're going to have more traffic than a, a meat stand? I mean, I think. I could be wrong. But, I mean, you know, and it is on F-94. There's a lot of traffic that goes by there. So um, I think it's a good use of the property. I mean, we could have had, like, 
Mr. Tripp said, a billionaire come in and want to put in a gas station with, with his money. But I appreciate the fact that we have a local farmer that wants to embrace co the culture of agriculture or, or, or farming. And I like that. So I'm in favor of this. Mr. Baker? Yeah, I, I voted no at this at planning and zoning because of the spot zoning. I don't think commercial is the right use, but this use, I think, meets with the surrounding neighborhood. And I don't really feel it's detracting. I, and I don't think it's going to add traffic. I think the most of the people that are going to stop in are, are what's already what they call pass by traffic, people already on the road. So, and I agree with Mr. Brazel. This is, uh, it's a small lot. I doubt that you could, we could even get a, a, a viable commercial property on it with our setbacks and, and the requirements that we have. So no fault of theirs. They were told to come in at commercial. I don't like the commercial, but I like this use. So I will be voting for it too. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Hammond. I also support this. I think it's a good concept. Goes with the area, so. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? All right, seeing none, we move on to uh, Bill number 5168. Bill number 5168, requested by Michael Herbert, sponsored by Joe Brazel, an ordinance amending the zoning district map of the County of St. Charles, Missouri, by rezoning land from A, Agricultural District, to R1E, Single Family Residential District, for application RZ23-02. Questions or comments on Bill 5168? Just real quick, yes. on this one, Robert, this is where they're just building those bigger homes on, on Summers Road, is that is that correct? Yes, there's a <coughs> single family home that was recently under construction on this property towards the front, so which pretty much precludes being able to subdivide this on with a street, you know, in a, in a subdivision. I'm told that the property owners at least stated that um, should this be approved, they would like to uh, trade some land or deed some land towards the back of this lot to a neighbor. And that, that would allow them to do this. But they're already building the house. That's, yeah, the house. Those big houses. On, yeah. Yeah, and, there's, a, there's a photo of a house yeah. under construction that's right. in your pocket. Okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, they're, they already started doing it. So, I mean, it's, it, I mean it, I think it's good. They're nice, beautiful homes, right? Yeah. I mean, so, okay. Yeah, on the other side of Summers Road, you've got two schools. You've got an elementary school and a high school there. Okay, thank you. Any other comments on Bill 5168? Seeing none, we move on to bill number 5169. Bill number 5169, requested by Michael Herbert, sponsored by Mike Elam, an ordinance amending the zoning district map of the County of St. Charles, Missouri by rezoning land from R1A, single family residential district, to R1D, single family residential district, per application RZ23-03. Okay, questions or comments? Yes, I, go ahead, okay. Mike. Either, okay. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so I looked at this property. I drive by this property a lot, and, and the properties next to it on, I guess it's the, it's the north, maybe, they're uh, larger lots, and the properties just to the south match the zoning, but they still built larger lots. I think the smallest lot next to it is like 25,000 square feet. So uh, these are larger lots on both sides of this property, and I, I just think the 10,000 square foot is just just too dense for, for to sandwich in between these two properties. I think if they had a viable plan from the home buyer showing us what they want to do with this, this particular zoning, it'd be easy to understand. But without having anything, I just can't support this. Mr. Elam. I'd like to invite the DDRB folks to come up. So Peg, you addressed it a little bit when the gentleman comments about um, building group homes. Mm -hmm. um, and a number of people from their subdivision reached out to me, and that was the number one concern that I heard, is um, these guys are going to build all these group homes there, all this emergency equipment, everything's going to show up. So I called you guys to ask, mm -hmm. hey, what's the plan for this? Mm -hmm. And can you just express to everybody why those group homes are not going to be allowed and are not a possibility to be built there. Sure. Um, uh, there are rules against uh, density as it relates to group homes for people with developmental disabilities. I mean, philosophically, it's not appropriate, but it also, um, those homes and the staffing of those homes are funded through the state uh, uh, to provide the services needed in those homes, and the state will simply not fund services in homes that are in dense 
uh, areas like that. So there, there can only be one home on that property that would house people with developmental disabilities, uh, unless it was privately funded, and that's not a reasonable solution. It's, that's too expensive. So to Mr. Baker's question, mm -hmm. why 10,000 square feet? Well, I think that was the, that was in the county plan as well as that's how it is in, in the neighborhoods around there. So there's nothing obviously that would require it to be 10,000 feet, but that was the, what was recommended in the county. Uh, Master uh, plan. Master plan. Okay. So the area that Mr. Baker's talking about that backs up to this particular right. property is a cul-de-sac that's in the adjoining neighborhood. And right. those lots that are in the cul-de-sac are larger, but when you look at the rest of the neighborhood, uh -huh. the rest of the neighborhood lots don't seem to be 25,000 square foot. How big are the lots for the majority of that subdivision that's back behind there? Are they in that 10 to 15,000 square foot range? Yeah, I believe Addison Park has a 10,000 square foot um, zoning. It's, uh, it's the way the, the main yeah. drag looks, right. but I was just curious. I, it is zone 10,000, but I think yeah. the lots are a little bit yeah. larger than yeah. that. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. County Executive, please. Are, are the larger lots, the larger neighboring lots, are they in the county or are they in the city? State? County, I believe. Okay. I think it's county. Yeah. Okay. And this is, it, they, it is zoned the same, it's just that they built larger lots. Mm -hmm. I understand, but the zoning is the same zoning that they have. I get so it, it okay. is in line with the surrounding area so you're not asking for zoning that is different than the other area that surrounds it with the exception of the two properties that are on the corner the the gentleman who's on the corner i believe from what you told me the circle drive that he has half of his circle drive hi how are you folks um half of their circle drive is actually on your property and if i understand from the pictures that i've seen you have a garden uh, that is actually on DDRB's property as well. Mm -hmm. um, so am I to understand that if, if you do this rezoning, is there anything that you're planning to do different than what you currently have? Is he gonna keep his circle drive and keep his garden and, and all of that? Right now we're only asking for it to be rezoned. The board really hasn't had an opportunity to determine what we're going to do with that property, but rezoning it would give it the best use for the taxpayer's dollars. And uh, we know that they would like to request some opportunity to retain their driveway. We granted them a temporary easement several years ago when Canal Road was widened so that they could get in and out of their driveway safely. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hammond. You no, I don't have any quick. comments. Anyone else? I, I appreciate that. I, I would ask. Mr. Meyer, uh, if you could. And I don't think we have any more questions okay. for thank you folks you. right thank now. Thank you. Um, so um, the property that is <coughs> behind them, mm -hmm. um, I talked to those folks and the, the lady who was here earlier who was speaking on their behalf. Right. And I hope their family is okay, by the way. That sounds horrible having an accident especially coming to a county meeting. So much better reasons to be on the road. Um, but there's a gentleman back here in the back who has that lot on the corner. They are the lot right next to them. When I talk to them, they have the piece of property that is landlocked right behind the DDRB lot, mm -hmm. from their lot and there. From what they were explaining to me, uh, the stuff that got built around them flooded their back area, that back lot that's back there that's like a 1.8 mm -hmm. uh, uh, acre lot that they have. Um, is there any recourse that those folks have for that water running down and, and basically creating a marsh uh, and unusable land for them? Well, in, in terms of this property that we're talking about now, the DDBR's, DDRB's property, if this should be developed as a, let's just say a cul-de-sac subdivision, they would have to put in uh, water retention and also stormwater quality measures to address both the quality and the quantity of stormwater coming off the property. That's one of the reasons that even though what's requested, the zoning is, uh, R1D zoning would allow 10,000 square foot lots 
theoretically you could have more lots, but practically speaking, you're probably talking about maybe five to six total. And in terms of the, the future use, future use would be exactly what the future use, the range of uses that are allowed now. It's currently single family zoning subdivision. They're proposing single family zoning subdivision. The only difference is the minimum lot size and the setback requirements. So any uses that would be allowed, the range of uses I should say, allowed now would be the same range of uses that would be allowed under the proposed zoning. It's really the, the lot size and setback difference. And, and then one final question I guess about that. In this rezoning, no dirt's gonna be turned or approved to be turned uh, off of this rezoning, correct? So if anything was to be built, they would have to come back to planning and zoning to get anything built, is that correct? Correct. If they want to subdivide the property and have to go through planning and zoning commission, um, they'd have to get uh, land disturbance permits through the county, um, whatever permits that we require. So. so for the folks who were worried about what could be built there, to the gentleman's comments, right. nothing can be built there until plans are laid out and approved by the county. Is that fair to say? Correct. It has to be approved by Planning Zoning Commission and or county staff using our code of ordinances. So to be clear, nothing can be built. She just shook her head no at me, but I'm trying to find out from you to tell them nothing can be built there without further approval. This rezoning does not allow anything to be built, correct? We're done with public comment, correct? Correct. This zoning, uh, zoning map amendment request in and of itself doesn't permit anything specific to be built. And lastly, this is in accordance with the county master plan. Yes, the, the proposed density is in accordance with the county master plan. Thank you. I have no further questions. Okay, anyone else? Yes, Mr. Hanna. Uh, I, I looked at some photos earlier, and there's, there's other, that Addison Place, those are 10, it's zoned for 10,000 square foot. <coughs> Um, it, it, towards the east, adjoining towards the east, I think it's Addison Park, that cul-de-sac, that's zoned for R1D, so the zoning would be match that, but there's also R1A zoning adjoining as well. So there's, there's two different single family districts that adjoin this property. Okay. okay. All right, thank you, Mr. Myers. Any other questions? All right, we move on to, um, the next bill for introduction, which is bill number 5170. Bill number 5170 requested by Michael Herbert, sponsored by Nancy L. Schneider, an ordinance amending the zoning district map of the County of St. Charles, Missouri by rezoning land from A, Agricultural District with Floodway Fringe Overlay District to RF, Riverfront District with Floodway Fringe Overlay District per application RZ 23-04. Questions or comments? Seeing none, we move on to the next bill for introduction, which is bill number 5171. Bill number 5171, requested by Michael Herbert, sponsored by Nancy Schneider, an ordinance relating to housing and community assistance, and one, approving the 2023 annual action plan for St. Charles County, Missouri, in its capacity as an urban county for fiscal year 2021 to 2025, under the Community Development Block Grant Program of the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, and authorizing the county executive to execute all documents or certifications required for submittal to HUD with the action plan and two, further authorizing the county executive to execute the funding approval slash agreements that HUD shall require upon approving the 2023 annual action plan. Questions or comments on this particular bill? Seeing none, we move on to bill number uh, 5172 for introduction. Bill number 5172, requested by Stephanie Huey, sponsored by Terry Hollander, an ordinance authorizing the county executive or his designate to execute an intergovernmental agreement for financial assistance, grant agreement number 202308 between St. Charles County and the St. Louis Jefferson Solid Waste Management District for receipt of funds in an amount up to $160,000. Questions or comments? Seeing none, next up is bill number 5173. Bill number 5173, requested by Ryan Graham, sponsored by Council as a Whole, an ordinance authorizing execution of a trail license agreement and ingress, egress between St. Charles County and the Missouri Department of Natural Resources to allow the St. Charles County Parks and Recreation Department to rock a section of trail that separates Missouri Bluffs Park 
from the Katy Trail State Park for the consideration of ten dollars. Any other questions or comments? Okay. And last of all, we have bill number 5174 for introduction. Bill number 5174 requested by Jeff Smith, sponsored by Terry Hollander, an ordinance amending the 2023 budget as adopted by ordinance 22-087 as amended for the removal of a wireless communications network spec one position and the addition of a wireless communications network spec three position in the Department of Emergency Communications of St. Charles County. Questions or comments? Seeing none, that ends bills for introduction. Uh, we have no tabled bills, so we will open it up for announcements and miscellaneous. Anyone have anything? Okay, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. Second. All right. We are adjourned. Thank you, folks. Mm -hmm.